Um, what we will do today is um, I'll talk about something that most of you know already by default, uh, very familiar with already. So think of what I'm talking about as a just a high-level summary or, or review or something like that. And it's, it's the real fun stuff starts from Jeff and, and for the rest of the CDA folks. Welcome. <laughs> oh, here's Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a good place. Oh, here you go. Let's see where it's going. Right, so feel free to grab food while I talk. Okay. Okay. Here, um, of course, is a, a typical example of what, what a GIS could do better than a physical map, where you can zoom and pan around. But, of course, you want to map. It's uh, a peelable map so that you don't have to see everything clustered on one screen or, or one sheet of paper. You can decide what to see and what to hide okay? and combine different layers and set your transparency so that you can investigate visually at your own control. And more is that a map in a GIS, it's searchable. What if you don't know where to look? You're looking for something, you don't know where it is. You can type in the string or give it some keywords and you find the feature. And also, what if what you're looking for um, is too much text to write on the map? Right? You can query the content, you can see the information behind what you're seeing on the map. So it becomes searchable, queryable. And then, of course, to enhance the realistic view, a lot of the GIS systems have now uh, evolved from a, three, a 2D map into a 3D globe, having terrain extrusions and just to make you an, and paste over satellite images and so on, give you a more realistic view, right? So far, we, we're just talking about how to see the place. It's just visual visual information. But GIS is a lot more than what you can see. Many of you are familiar with this function. We call it a GIS function being an intelligent map because it can answer your questions, such as how to get from point A to point B, navigating through one-way streets and, and you know, giving me the fast <coughs> route or shortest driving, whatever. Right? Many people use it. And it can also answer your questions uh, such as, where is this address? I have a postal address. I don't know where it is, right? Geocoding is our term to find addresses on a map, a street network, and uh, be able to find more information about <coughs> these places. Um, all you have to start with is really the actual postal address. And more than that, you could do spatial analysis, what we call overlay analysis, which means, okay, you found your addresses, you see the buildings, and then you can overlay, say, groundwater aquifer information with your buildings, and you could see which buildings are in uh, wet um, lot zone, maybe, which part is in a high, higher um, elevation. Um, you can combine different information together, not just to see them, but also to do statistical analysis or um, um, other related uh, analysis by overlaying information. And beyond that, you can you can uh, look into data by um, querying the system and finding out what's adjacent to what. What's my, you know, what are my neighbors? Uh, I mean, this county, which are the other counties that, that I have border with, right? Economic studies um, look into those very often. Uh, how far are those places from me? You know, I live here. How far are the hospitals from me? Which one I should go to? Uh, visibility study. Not that vis visibility by looking at a map, but if I'm standing on the ground on that spot and there's terrain around me, right, which part I can see, which I can't. Forestry uh, use that often. Forest industry that they they decide where they can cut and not doing the scenic drive or something. And furthermore, 
uh, getting more and more complex. Uh, water system modeling, both surface water and groundwater modeling, flows, trace of pollutants, uh, uh, transported polluted water systems, salinity, saltwater intrusion. A lot of these modeling are based on GIS systems, of course, combined with hydrology uh, knowledge. And hurricane path and damage prediction involves uh, buffering and circulation, um, wind direction, other parameters that you put into a pretty complex model. Uh, to predict where the, the movement will be. And then you can use overlay to see what are the structures between how many people are in the impact zone and how many live in a, you know, a different wind speed belt and so on. All of these are spatial analysis that GIS can do. Um, another example of uh, hot spot analysis. Where are the emergency calls mostly coming from and rarely coming from? whether the service centers are located at the right spot with the right capacity to handle all these different needs, uh, or crime analysis, or um, geostatistical uh, type of modeling is very useful in social studies and, and uh, many other disciplines, too. So I think I can stop here, because there are many, many more applications where location matters, you know, the distance, the uh, spatial relationship, the size, the, um, the position that um, impacts <coughs> the um, understanding of the phenomena. And if you go into our, our Center for Geographic Analysis website, uh, home project resume, the first half, you could see Lots of examples of what we have done in the past five years, and, and these guys are, are the ones who did them, um, for different schools, uh, different departments, using different GIS technology. So if you're interested, feel free to browse through the summary there. Um, so, summary of summary. What is GIS? Back to our original question. First, you see a smart interactive functional map, right? That's, that's what you see on the surface. In order to make that map so interactive and, and smart, you need the procedures and tools and models to crank out the algorithms and doing um, the modeling. And then in order to do that, you need to have all the appropriate data behind. So almost three layers going inside further, from the visualization piece to the analysis piece and then to the data management piece. Three components making GIS work. And um, over the years, over the decades, GIS evolved a lot. And there's some new terminology coming, almost like GIS is too, too old fashioned. People like to say geospatial, uh, geosematic, geotech, location-based technology. All that are sort of kind of GIS, I'd say. Uh, different sectors of, like to use different terms. And it's related to GPS, remote sensing. And the next term is kind of my, my choice, the geo-exploratory systems. And some people call it, academics call it new geography. Um, to kind of catch the, the, the Google Earth, the virtual Earth, the, um, the social platforms for simple um, interactions of uh, social data with the public. And uh, I think I need to speed up further. It all started in the 60s, actually, uh, right around the time that computers are made into civilian academic life. Right before that, Professor McCard was doing mylar transparency maps overlaid on light tables. And that's kind of a GIS without a computer, right, as far as you can go. And the real first com uh, uh, computerized GIS was by uh, Roger Tomlins in, in Canada. He's done a huge um, government job, inventory of natural resources for Canada. But the real commercial or general GIS that anybody can use for any project 
really started at Harvard as a design school. Um, the Harvard lab for computer uh, graphics and, and spatial analysis had developed a few generations of GIS systems that was not geared towards just one project like Roger Tom Linson's GIS at the beginning, but uh, given it to a lot of users. And um, going through the decades, a quick, quick <coughs> summary, uh, in, the, in the 60s, GIS just took shape, and um, the census of 1970 is the first year that census was done on a map spatial base. But before that, you can't see census data in a mappable form. <coughs> and then some com commercial companies uh, um, were established later in that decade. In the 70s, the focus was in uh, computer topography. And then, of course, Landsat Sala imagery was uh, deployed first generation in the 70s, too. So it started gathering a lot of spatial data at that time, and spatial data gathering and mapping. In the 80s, uh, the technology matures further, and it gets into the data models, the raster model, the vector model, the compression, uh, the topology. So a lot of the underlying GIS analytical tools started at that time. And when it gets to the 90s, uh, the, 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 the hot topic at that time was numerical modeling, graphic user interface, integration with environmental models, um, and of course, GPS system matured in the <coughs> at that time. And um, the last decade, we see a huge boom of server GIS, embedded GIS, meaning you have an other system, enterprise system, but you have a mapping component embedded inside, not GIS standalone anymore. Web GIS, of course, mobile GIS. All that started in um, the last decade. And now we're starting a new decade. Um, the buzzwords out there now, um, this is my personal choice, correct me if I, I miss something major, I would say volunteer to geographic information is one of them. Um, Cloud-based GI services, open access, open source, open standard, all these are kind of sealed, made possible by web GIS, I would say. And that leads, I think, into um, our other presentations about web GIS. But before I go there, I want to remind people that desktop GIS, before it was mainframe in the 70s and, and workstation in the 80s, right, desktop in the 90s and going on, um, it still a lot more powerful than WebGIS. You can get the best one nowadays because WebGIS is has a short history, right? Uh, it only started about 10, um, 10 15 years ago, um, and it's, it's still changing, evolving <coughs> almost monthly. And user-driven development, the general public really wants, you know. I can be not so much of analytical capabilities. And, and those who do high-end analysis, they have desktop GIS. They do exactly what they want to do anyway. Um, they, they don't rely on the web so much. And then technology limitations, the analytical GIS requires data-heavy, computation-heavy <coughs> infrastructure. It's, it's still kind of hard to provide all of that on the web. Um, and also, um, Analysis require unique configuration of your models and advanced knowledge and so on. It's hard to just throw out a tool to the general public and don't give them training and expect them to really uh, uh, to, to use that. So it's it's gradual. The the shift more and more uh, web GIS can do, but it's not a replacement 